Hello grade sevens, natural sciences again today, I'm Helen and let's see what we have in store for you today. Today we are looking at more information about separating mixtures. So we've learned that in our everyday lives we separate mixtures all the time. We go into our purse or into our wallet and we're separating different coins and money from each other in order to pay people. We are selecting things from a fruit basket if we want to choose our own fruit. So we've already learned that probably one of the ways that you are most familiar with sorting or separating mixtures is by the idea of hand sorting. We would separate buttons or mail or different toys apart from each other simply by using our hands. But these items have to be large enough for us to see and large enough for us to be able to separate them from each other. If the items or objects become too small, we need to resort to some other strategy, some method such as sieving. So if we had different kinds of seeds, we could sieve them according to size. And we spoke also about sieving particles of sand from the slightly larger pebbles. And certainly if you clean a swimming pool, you have to sieve the leaves off the top of the pool. But it's not going to work when the particles of our mixture are extremely small. So how could we separate the components of this soil mixture? The particles in the soil mixture are much smaller than the particles in the sand mixture. So we need to think of another separation process. And our separation process that we will focus on for the moment is filtration. We can filter different materials to separate them from each other. Now, Let's have a look at this picture and let's label it to see how the process of filtration works. So we would need to have our mixture. That's the first point. Our mixture, and in this case, we've got that soil sample plus we're going to mix it also with a bit of water and that's going to help the filtration process. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up some apparatus. We're going to set up a beaker or as it is here a flask, something to collect the liquid. We're going to need a funnel and the funnel is there simply to direct the liquid through the narrow opening of the flask. And we need something called filter paper. Now, in terms of you doing this investigation at home, you could easily do this. You don't need to have any fancy paper. You could use roller towel. You could use a coffee filter if you had a coffee filter for a coffee machine. Now, what we do is we pour our mixture of soil and water into the filter paper, which is folded inside the funnel. We pour it through very slowly, very gently, so we don't get any splashes. What do you think is going to happen? Well, we see that our liquid component filters through and the water over here is a lot cleaner than the original water sample and in the filter paper we will collect the soil or the solid matter and now what we can do is we could possibly go on and sieve the solid matter in order to get larger particles and smaller particles separated from each other. So that's our process of filtration. 
Now, we're going to look at an everyday process of filtration that you might be very familiar with. Let's look at how we use filtration to make coffee. We're starting off with solid coffee beans. Now, the coffee beans have a very hard coating or outer covering, and we need to grind them so that we can release the insides of the coffee beans, which have all the lovely, wonderful aromas and tastes. So we grind the coffee beans and we place the coffee, the ground coffee, into a filter. And in this case, we've got simply a piece of filter paper that has been folded to fit our coffee machine. So here we have the, the coffee grinds and we're going to put them, and of course it's a dry material, into our filter. And we put our filter into our coffee machine. And then we're going to add hot water. And what happens to this mixture is the water and the coffee become saturated and we are going to be able to allow those lovely flavors and smells to move out of the coffee bean into the liquid coffee. Now what we do is we can take out this filter paper and in the filter paper we will be left with the, the, the solid matter from the coffee but in our cup we will be left with the coffee liquid which of course is a solution of water and all the flavorings and chemicals from our ground up coffee. So we can see that filtration is a process that we often use in our everyday lives. So when you have a look at these next pictures see if you can work out where filtration works in other places in your life. Have a look at the pictures and see if you can identify what is being filtered in each of the pictures. Well, of course, here, very similar to making coffee, we have a tea bag. And the tea bag works in exactly the same way as our coffee filter paper worked. We've got the solid tea, which is ground up tea leaves, inside the tea bag, which is simply filter paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this solid tea, put it into a teapot or into a mug. We're going to pour our boiling water over it and the water is going to seep through the filter paper and all of the lovely flavors and beautiful smells of the tea are going to come out. The chemicals are going to be able to move out of the filter paper because those particles are very tiny. The part of the tea that we don't want to have in our cup is the solid tea leaves. The solid particles will remain filtered inside the tea bag and we can take that out, we can squeeze it out and we've got our cup of tea without all the little solid bits in it. Can you identify what kind of filter this is? Well, this is a water filter, particularly for swimming pools. So here what we do is we have this big body of water in a swimming pool. We then have to sieve off leaves from the top of the pool, but there are particles of sand and dust and other matter that get into the water in solution. And what we need to do there is we need to be able to extract those solid particles of dust and sand. And we do that by filtering the water through a sand filter. So in this case, we're not using a paper filter. We're using different kinds of sand and the water that is dirty from the swimming pool will be able to move through the sand and the sand particles will trap 
all of the other solid matter and what will come out the other side of the filter is lovely clean water. And those of you who have fish tanks will know that you have a much smaller example of this filtration, water filtration system in a fish tank. But it isn't only liquids that we filter. Have a look at these items. What are these items and what are they filtering? Well, in these cases, air is being filtered. Now, we need to remember, as we have learned before, that air is a mixture. It's a mixture of different gases, but also suspended in the air are other little pieces of solid matter, like, for example, dust particles, even pollen. We could even have bacteria or other kinds of microorganisms tiny, tiny organisms we cannot see with the naked eye mixed in the air. So when we use a face mask, the important thing that we're doing here is we're trapping the air as it comes into us from the outside environment and the air that we breathe out. And on both surfaces of this filter, which is constructed to, to form a mask around our face, we will trap the dust, the pollen, the bacteria, any spit coming from our saliva as we talk that may contain microorganisms such as viruses, and we're going to trap incoming air as well. This is showing you the components of an air conditioner. And an air conditioner does very much the same thing as a mask, but on a much more sophisticated level. And it can really take out the tiniest particles of the air that, that are polluting the air. So polluted air goes in and lovely clean air comes out of the filter. Do you know what this is? This is called a, an air filter and it's found in a motor vehicle. And in the same way, the air filter is going to be simply very sophisticated folded filter paper that's going to filter the air that the car is producing and the air that the car needs. So we have an air filter. Now, did you know that you could use magnets to separate different mixtures of metals? So now we're moving away from the idea of sieving and filtration into something very different. Imagine we had this scrap heap and we wanted to start sorting out the things. We could take all the plastic items out by hand and we would be left with an assortment of different metals. How do we go about sorting out those metals? Well, one of the things we can do is use a magnet. Now we know that certain metals, not all metals, but certain metals are magnetic. And it's usually metals that are containing iron and nickel, for example, that are magnetic. So we could have a pile of tin cans, for example, and we hover a big magnet over our scrap heap and all of the magnetic metal will be attracted to the magnet and we will leave non-magnetic material or metal like aluminium behind. And we know that we can then separate these two kinds of metals in order to forward the process of uh, recycling of metals. Usually we'll see enormous electromagnets in scrapyards and these electromagnets are very powerful to separate iron or magnetic material from non-magnetic material. So mag magnets or magnetism is yet another way of separating mixtures. So what have we looked at? We've looked at hand sorting, we've looked at sieving, and today we've looked at filtration and we've seen that filtration happens quite often in our everyday lives. And we've looked at using the property of 
magnetism in order to separate metals that are magnetic from metals that are not magnetic. That's it for today, but in our next lesson, we're going to look even further at how we can separate mixtures. For today, that's it. Bye-bye.